Hi everyone, this is Mindy and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I have four cards to share with you where I'm going to be stepping up my stenciling. The technique that I'm going to be doing is going to add some fun texture and look of dimension to my stenciled images. The products that I'm going to be using today is from the Curved Floral Bundle from Gina K Designs. This is a great bundle that has some stencils, dies, and a stamp set. And then I'll be bringing in a few other things from my stash. So here's a look at that curved floral die. There is a kind of a shadow die that's going to cut out our stenciled image. And then there's also that outline die. This is the stamp set that's included in the bundle. Lots of great sentiments on here, but I had something in my stash that I really wanted to use. And then this is a stencil that's included in there. You can do some ink blending with your circles or line these up and do some ink blending around that to create a mask. Now the stencil that's going to get a lot of love in this video is this layering stencil. So it has two images on each stencil. It is labeled down in that bottom left hand corner and there is just two in the pack here and they're very easy to line up. You can use just one of them or both to add detail. So I am starting off with my magnetic work surface here. I added some repositionable tape behind this layering piece. Now that white piece, I used that open area die to die cut that out of layering white cardstock. And then I have a stencil placed over the top. Now I wanted to show you this really quick. I like to use my ink stands, which have the rubber feet on them, but sometimes they just pick up stuff from my desk. So I wiped those feet down with just kind of an alcohol wipe pad and now it's nice and stuck to my glass surface. Okay, so the first layer of the stencil is going to be adding my leaves. I'm using mini ink blending brushes and I'm starting with Blue Lagoon. So one thing I really had fun with was playing with different color combinations. Instead of your typical green leaves, which I do use, I thought I'd try this blue combination. So I did that first layer in that Blue Lagoon. I'm leaving my stencil in place and then coming in within the navy. Now this I'm adding kind of towards where the flowers would be and blending out towards the outside edge of the leaves. I don't want to color the whole thing with that dark blue. I just want to kind of give some highlights and shadow areas to it. And it's a lot easier to control all of this with a mini ink blending brush versus the larger blending brushes. So that's a look at the leaves. Now I shifted that same stencil and I have the open areas of the flowers. Now for this, I'm coming in first with bubble gum, bubble gum pink and laying down just a light layer of that light pink. And then I'm going to come in with passionate pink. Now for the passionate pink, I'm going to start in the center of those flowers and work my way out, leaving that light pink on the outer edge of the flowers. So this is one way that I like to add some definition to, or even just some added interest to my flowers. And then that smaller flower and the berries I did in lemon drop, and then coming in with sweet mango just towards the very bottom. And then that completes the first layer of the stencil. So that was just one stencil piece. So I'm gonna remove this, and I'm going to bring in the second stencil, which has two layers to it. Now this first one that I lined up is going to give me the center of the flowers, which I did with lemon drop ink. And then just using the very tip of my mini blending brush. So I'm kind of holding it almost kind of straight up or at an angle. I'm adding some sweet mango to the very center of that. So I can remove that piece. Now the last layer on this stencil is going to be adding or filling in some of those areas. So it's going to kind of look like the background of your card. Now for this, I'm using Whisper Ink, which is super, super light. So I go over it multiple times. I really didn't want to add a color or even a darker gray. I wanted it to be fairly light, but still show some definition. And that finishes off my first one. Now I love these colors. I think that is super different. It's very bright and vibrant. And I did create another one off screen. So now I'm going to go through and I have a few other color combinations that I want to share with you. So I have a few of these floral arrangements kind of already pre die cut from layering white cardstock from Gina K designs. Now this first step I did in lemon drop. So I'm kind of giving it a base layer. Then I came in with light spruce and I'm just blending 
from the flower out towards the edge of the leaves, but I really want to make sure I leave some of that lemon drop showing. And then I came in with dark spruce and just not blending as far out. So that is a really pretty way to do leaves. Then I moved on to the flowers. Now this one I did all in bubblegum pink, adding kind of that undercoat. And now what I'm doing is I'm taking that stencil that's in the bundle. Now this has the stripes and I placed that over my flowers and I positioned it so it fit just perfect in there. I'm taking passionate pink ink and I am brushing this in the same direction as the stencil and just using my brush and applying that ink up and down. So that's going to give me stripes. Now, mind you, I still have my other stencil in place. I'm just placing this pattern on top of that stencil. So I changed direction of my stencil. So it's going to go uh, horizontal instead of vertical. And once again, just brush those stripes on and did the same thing with that smaller flower. So we really did stenciling on top of stenciling and it creates such a cool pattern. It is really just super fun to look at in person. So I'm going to go through and finish the rest of my flower with a little bit of Blue Lagoon. I have Lemon Drop and Sweet Mango for the centers. And then I'm going to fill in the rest of those open areas. So I walked through all the pieces of the stencil to finish that off. So that is my second way to really step up your stencils is add some of those cool designs. Now on that stencil, there's also some circles that you could have added on top of your ink blending instead of those stripes. Now this next one is me just really having fun with some colors. I once again started out with lemon drop ink. This time I went straight into that dark spruce to add some more definition to my leaves. But now for my flowers, I am going to do a rainbow of color. So I started out, I think it was bubblegum pink I added in there, or maybe it could have been passionate pink. Then I have the lemon drop. And when that overlaps with that pink, it's going to give me that orange. Then I have, I believe I have turquoise C there for my blue. And then coming in with medium lilac. So I'm trying to fit all the colors of the rainbow onto this one open area of the stencil. So that's kind of another fun way is just instead of coloring it like a real flower, just go through and have fun kind of mixing up your colors. So I went through and I finished this off with the lemon drop for the centers and the whisper ink for those filler spaces in the flower. So another one, this is kind of more on a pastel side and would be good for any type of spring card or if you're looking at Easter cards, which I know is kind of cutting it pretty close, but just an idea. Now here is one more and this color combination I was having a lot of fun with. The leaves I did in bubblegum pink and passionate pink and then the flowers I did in lemon drop and then coming in with sweet mango in the centers and then when I moved to the second stencil to add some details I went to tomato soup for the center of my flowers which was really fun. So that I just really was having fun with this different color combination and just seeing what I could come up with. Now for my card fronts and my sentiments, I really wanted to use my poly glaze sheets. So I have my mini mink warming up on setting three and that plastic piece I just showed you was the carrier sheet that comes with the mini mink. So I brought out my radiant roses words and I'm also going to bring out tiny dots and diamonds in the poly glaze sheets. So for this, you are going to need to use deco foil or the fancy foils with Thermal Web and Gina K Designs. I brought out a passionate pink, which I very rarely use colored foil. I have a ton of it, but I just, I never grab it. I love my gold, but I'm trying out the passionate pink. I trimmed that down to the same size as my card front. So right here, you can see very faintly the light gray from the poly glaze. And I have that, so it's sentiment up. And then I have my pretty side up for my uh, fancy foils. Now I'm going to take this and place it inside of my carrier sheet. And then with the folded edge going in first, I'm gonna run this through my mini mink machine. And I know it's uh, ready because that green light is on. So one of the main reasons I love my mini mink is because it heats up so super quick. So while that was running through, I trimmed out some gold so that was ready to go. 
and then I can peel back my passionate pink. Now, this is really hard to see in the camera, but it is a beautiful bright pink with a lot of shine on here. Now I'm going to go through and do those same sentiments in gold. So I'm going to run that with the folded edge first into my mini mink machine. I can peel these back and I have now these beautiful gold sentiments, which once again, you really have to see this in person to see how much beautiful shine is to these. Now, ThermoWeb does carry some carrier sheets, which have kind of a protective lining. There's some sort of special lining in there. And I brought that out just to show you that you can use these too. Once again, you'll want to place your folded edge in first. It's just that way there's no open areas or open ends catching your rollers in the mink machine. Now, this was the tiny dots I did in that gold deco foil. And, you know, honestly, I really think I got better results with the thermal web carrier sheets than I did with the um, carrier sheet that comes with the mini mink. I don't know what the difference is. Maybe I needed more pressure with the mink carrier sheet, but I just felt like I really got better results with those carrier sheets from thermal web. Now, one thing I really love is that these sentiments have a coordinating die. So I'm going to line up that coordinating die. I'm holding it down with easy C tape and I'm really making sure that I'm not having that tape touch my foil. I don't want to risk that damaging my foil. So once I have those taped down, I can run these through my Spellbinders Platinum 6 die cut machine and these are going to pop right out. I'm going to bring this up to the camera to try and show you just how beautiful they are. It doesn't catch the shine in the camera, but they die cut out really well. Now, one thing I did want to show you is that there is an outline in this bundle I die cut from black cardstock. And I know sometimes people can have some difficulty die cutting out these intricate areas. So here's what I do is I have that tape to some black onyx cardstock. Now, you'll want to flip your sandwich. So I have my regular top plate on the bottom. I have my piece of cardstock down with the die cut facing up and then my cutting plate on top. Now I also want to point out that I did not place my die in the center of my die cutting machine. You can see I have that positioned more off to one side and I think that is a huge contributor on how well this die cuts out. You can see I had so much left over on my die cut plate. All of these pieces are falling out. I'm literally just sitting here dropping it onto my glass surface and a lot of this is falling out. Now, I did it this way probably four times, and every single time I die cut it out, it was absolutely perfect. All I needed to do was poke that out with my craft pick and then just poke out any remaining pieces. So if you're having problems die cutting anything, try doing it that way where you flip your sandwich and also position your die onto one side or another. Now, one other thing with the stencil included in the bundle that I wanted to show you is this oval. Now, either the oval or the circle that you could use, I placed that in the center of my layering white cardstock. I masked off areas around it with post-it tape, and then I'm blending that oval with some bubblegum pink ink using my regular size blending brush. Now, I did start off of the stencil and blend onto it, trying to leave a light pink in the center. And then I'm coming around the edge with passionate pink. So my edges are going to be that darker color, and then it's going to fade off into white as it gets towards the center. Then I can peel up my stencil, and I am going to die cut this panel out using my Master Layouts 2 die. Now, for the rest of the cards, I did finish most of them off screen, so I will just kind of talk you through what I did here. Now, I have my panel that I die cut out of the Master Layouts 2. I layered that on top of a piece of passionate pink cardstock to give me a thin border and then added that on top of a four and a quarter by five and a half inch piece of white cardstock. I added foam tape behind my curved floral and also my sentiment, placed it on the front of the card, and then finishing this off with some clear quartz sequins from Gina K Designs using my Connect Glue. And then I also added some gold pearls in the center of my flowers. Now, there was an area on the stencil to add centers, but I knew I would want to embellish them instead. Now, my next card is going to be using that curved floral that I did in the rainbow colors. So for this one, I positioned it differently on the front of my card. 
I have a background there that I used a lattice embossing folder from Gina Key Designs, layered that on top of some sea glass cardstock, and then a white card front panel. Both of my sentiment and that floral arrangement are added with some foam tape and then embellished with my gold pearls. Now this next one is using that kind of bright pink and then the blue leaves. This one I added so it's kind of drawing your attention towards the center, which is where my sentiment is. And I used the polyglaze sheet that I did with the tiny dots in gold deco foil. And I have a layer of cardstock behind that using in the navy cardstock added to a white card panel that is four and a quarter by five and a half. Now for that one, I had used the angel aura rhinestones for the center of the flowers. And then my last card here, I used the black and gold mix of pearls. I love those black pearls for the center. This one is using the diamonds polyglaze sheet layered on top of passionate pink cardstock, and then also added a few more gold pearls around the sentiment and the floral arrangement. And that finishes up my four cards that I have for you. I usually don't do this many cards in a video, but I was really having fun just stepping up my stenciled image, whether it be with another stencil, a pattern on a stencil, or by just adding some depth and dim dimension with some inks. I hope you enjoyed today's inspiration. I will have all of my supplies listed down below in the video description and over on my blog as well. Thank you so much for stopping by today and I'll see you again real soon.